this video is going to be short, sweet and simple. Hey guys, I'm super excited today because we are talking about M5 Stamp and you might be thinking, well, right, wait a minute, what's so exciting about this tiny little ESP based board? Well, I'm about to tell you. First of all, I like M5 Stack products. Basically, you can see them there uh, to prove that I really like them. Uh, but M5 Stack released M5 Stamp, which is kind of departure from the usual lineup. If you're familiar with M5 Stack products, you probably know that each device they release is unique and looks more like a consumer grade product rather than development board. Even though deep inside they are ESP32 based development boards. M5 Stamp is a departure from this because you basically are given a tiny little PCB with, well, ESP32 on it. So what's so cool about this one? Well, we'll have to take a closer look. And I really mean closer because this thing is seriously small. I've got the M5 Stamp kit without the programmer. And I'm going to touch about the programmer in a second. In order to find out what's so cool about this unit, obviously I have to remove the shroud, which you can do with the associated uh, Allen key. Now in the box, or tiny little strip, there are a couple of things included, uh, like female and male headers, I, would, I really appreciate inclusion, both of them, and the groove connector. So on the shroud you'll instantly notice that there is an ESP unit, this time ESP32 Pico D4. And what's so special about this particular one, that is, well, it's a smaller footprint, it's 7mm by 7mm, and it comes with a lower power consumption. Now on average, usual ESP draws around 80 to 100 or excess of that milliamps when um, being connected to internet and transferring data. But as you can see with associated table right now on the screen, this ESP, um, well, basically brings that a little bit lower. So for any battery operated project, this tiny little device is gonna be actually quite good. Now, apart from 3D antenna to increase the wireless range of the 2.4 GHz network, uh, you'll also find yourself a button which you can customize and a RGB LED so you can, oh, blink it. So the list of features kind of stops here. However, you could include the whole sensor in a USB and the temperature sensor, which lives in there as well. However, the temperature sensor is going to be mostly reporting the temperature of USB, which isn't that useful. As this is more DIY oriented product, you'll have to hone your soldering skills to get started. And if you're looking for a soldering iron, then I have this really sexy one TS80P, which I reviewed in this video there. But back to M5 stamp. Now, if you take a look at the edges, you'll notice there are broken out GPIOs. At the bottom edge, we have a groove connector. So those four pins will allow you to use any other device that M5 Stack has on offer thanks to the Groove ecosystem. Just look it up, there's a tons of different expansions, modules and sensors and for the most part they just plug and play. On the right edge of the board we have six GPIO pins and while you can assign them to anything really you want, the default function for them is to flash your firmware because they support FTD programming. So if you got your own FTD programmer, or if you purchase the kit with a programmer, you'll be able to flash additional firmware. This step isn't required because this board comes pre-flashed, and I'm gonna explain that in a moment. And on the left-hand side, you've got additional GPS, which you can use to define your own use cases, including DAC, uh, ADC, or PWM signals. The easiest way to get started with M5 Stamp is to take a sacrificial USB cable. I've chopped it off and I use positive and negative um, wires in there to provide 5 volts to corresponding pins. And once you power it on, that's pretty much it because the board comes pre-flashed and once powered on it will create an access point. Now, before you connect to this access point, just take a note of it because everything after M5 dash, that's your API key to use with UI flow. Just note it down because you're gonna use it in a moment. Once in your local network, navigate to UI flow, open settings, select M5 stamp and provide your API key so you could access the board. And that's it, you can start programming. I mean, it took me like three minutes to create this simple sketch in which I can start 
random RGB colors and stop them with a long press of a button. It's that simple. But if UI flow or MicroPython isn't really a thing and you want to go back to C++ as with any ESP32 boards, then you have a support also for libraries from M5 stack using Arduino IDE. Just bear in mind to do that you'll have to erase the existing firmware and then obviously you can get started with C++ programming like on any other ESP boards. And don't worry if you change your mind and you want to go back to wireless programming. All you have to do is just use M5 burner to reflash the firmware. Just bear in mind that a programmer is going to be needed in order to do so. So M5 stamp is a new board and I'm super excited to have it with me. Now if you're interested in any of the boards, I pretty much covered most of them apart from Core 2 which the review is still pending but I'm gonna include some of, the, some of the links in the description. I'd like to thank M5 Stack for sending me the board and if you're interested, obviously the link's gonna be in the description of this video. You know how YouTube works and how to find my work, how to get notified, etc. Not going to explain you all that, uh, all other YouTubers probably did. So I have a day off, <laughs> but I do not have a posting schedule. So it's best to keep in touch via social media so you could find out what I'm up to next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.